Good morning, church family, friends, everybody joining us online. We're glad you're here. It's Friday morning. We're starting the weekend. And let's start the weekend off right. Let's start the weekend off in the Word. I think the Word today is going to give us a purpose heading into the weekend that we can use. And that always makes life more fulfilling, right? So as you join us this morning, go ahead and hit that share button. If you're on a mobile device, it should be the bottom left. And then you just hit post or share now. And what that does is shares to people that you're friends with. It lets them know what we're doing. It gets them curious. It gets them joining us and it grows our community that we have here. So go ahead and share. And then you can answer this question as you're joining. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. This question, would you rather be the funniest person in the room or the smartest person in the room? Both of those are pretty good options. Would you rather be the funniest person in the room or the smartest person in the room? It's a tough one for me because I'd like to pick both, but if I had to pick one, I think I would actually pick being the funniest person because that's just a gift that I think would be so cool to have, just to be able to make everyone laugh and bring everyone joy through laughter. That's a unique gift that some of you have, and we all know people who have that incredible gift. So that's the one that I would probably pick, and I'm curious to know what, what you guys would pick as well. So go ahead and comment, funniest person or smartest person in the room, and you can talk about why as well. So as you're doing that, and as you're commenting, and as you're sharing this video, I'm going to start in on where we left off in Acts chapter 20. I'm going to read the ESV version, and we're just going to, to see what, what God's Word has to say for us today. So, book of Acts, remember this is through uh, Luke's perspective, and, and Luke's a doctor, and that's going to come into play here in this passage especially. So verse 1, chapter 20, after the uproar ceased, remember there was a riot in Ephesus that Pastor Lance talked about yesterday at the end of chapter 19, Paul sent for the disciples, and after encouraging them, he said farewell and departed for Macedonia. When he had gone through those regions and had given them much encouragement, he came to Greece. There he spent three months and when a plot was made against him by the Jews, as he was about to set sail for Syria, he decided to return through Macedonia. Of course, right? There's always plots from the Jews against Paul. Those who just can't accept the gospel, they just want to get rid of him, right? Because he's threatening their, their way of life, threatening what's comfortable and what's familiar for them. Verse 4, Sepater the Berean, son of Pyrrhus, accompanied him, and of the Thessalonians, Aristarchus, and Secundus, and Gaius of Derby, and Timothy and the Asians, Tychicus, and Trophimus. These went on ahead and were waiting for us at Troas, but we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread, and in five days we came to them at Troas, where we stayed for seven days. Now, this next passage is really the passage that we're going to focus on today for our application. So verse 7, on the first day of the week, when we were gathered together to break bread, Paul talked with them, intending to depart on the next day. And he prolonged his speech until midnight. So Paul knows he's going to leave this region soon. He's got to make the most of it. He's got to present the, the gospel in a nutshell as much as he can. He's staying up late with them. Paul's, Paul's a true grinder. There were many lamps in the upper room where we were gathered. Luke includes that interesting detail, and we're going to talk about why. And a young man named Eutychus, sitting at the window, sank into a deep sleep as Paul talked still longer. Now, pause. This part is actually encouragement for us pastors, because even Paul, that's probably the best preacher of all time, right? Even Paul had people fall asleep on him in his ministry. So it makes us feel a little better when that happens to us because it's not a good feeling when you see someone sleeping and you're preaching. So it says being overcome by sleep gets worse. He fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. So falls asleep. He's by the window. He falls out of the window and he passes away. And it just doesn't make sense. 
because Paul's preaching the gospel. These people are gathered here for a good reason to hear about Jesus. And, and this guy dies. It, it shouldn't happen, right? It, it makes no sense. But it's a reflection of our broken world. It's a reminder of that. We live in a world where stuff happens that doesn't make sense. Things happen to people that should never happen to those people. And that's what happens here. But Paul, God, they're going to make it right in this case. So it says, verse 10, But Paul went down and bent over him, and taking him in his arms, said, Do not be alarmed, for his life is in him. Okay? Now, th this reminds me of when Jesus goes to someone who's passed away and he says, no, not, not dead, just sleeping, and people laugh. And, and Paul's reflecting that language here. So, when Paul had gone up and had broken bread and eaten, he conversed with them a long while until daybreak, and so departed. And they took the youth away alive and were not a little comforted. So, God raises this guy from the dead. This guy who fell asleep on Paul. Paul rushes down. He, he's got confidence that, that God is going to heal him. And he does. He does. So there's a few things that, that we can take away from this story. What's interesting is this is the, the first mention we have in, the, in Scripture, in the book of Acts, of believers worshiping on the first day of the week. So believers worshiping on Sunday. The Jewish Sabbath was Saturday, but they're worshiping on the day of the resurrection, okay, as, as we do now. So that's, that's an interesting little uh, tidbit. It's interesting that Luke really gives Eutychus, the, the guy who fell asleep, he gives him an out because he says there were many lamps in the upper room. So it's late at night. First of all, these people are staying up way past their bedtime. And Eutychus, being a young man, what that would have meant, probably someone from the ages of... 8 to 14 or so, okay? And not only is he up past his bedtime, but these lamps, what do they do? They suck up the oxygen. So you get lower oxygen in a room, you get sleepy. You start to get sleepy. That's what happens. So Luke's a doctor. He adds that detail. He documents it. And also as a doctor, he documents that Eutychus was dead, right? He wasn't just knocked out and, and Paul just picked him up. This was a miraculous healing of Eutychus. Okay. Now let's, let's make the jump here to where we can apply this to our lives. Um, maybe this incident of Eutychus falling asleep while he's hearing the gospel can make us think about people who we know who have fallen asleep, so to speak, in their faith. Okay. You know, some of those people who Maybe it's a lifestyle that they're caught up in right now and you know that they've drifted from their faith and God's calling you to wake them up. Who are those people in your life who God's calling you to wake them up? Maybe it's those people who in quarantine are in isolation and they've just kind of drifted from being connected to church online. They've become disconnected and they're, they're struggling alone and we need to wake them up, right? There's, there's a lot of different things that, that people can get into to, to drift or reasons that they need to be woken up, so to speak. And we, we all need that at times, right? We, we need those energizer, those spiritual energizers to come back into our life and, and, and keep us going and keep us passionate. And that's part of what it means to have fellowship as a church, right? As we, we hold each other up and we hold each other accountable when we have fellowship with one another. So who are those people in your life who have fallen asleep and, and how can you reach out to them to help wake them up, right? Because we all need that at times. And as Christians, we really can't ever afford to be asleep, right? We can't afford to be asleep. For Eutychus, he fell asleep and he fell out of a window and he died. Now, thank, thank God, God rose him from the dead. But it reminds us that we don't know when our time is up. So there's, there's never a time in our lives when we can afford to fall asleep in our faith. Okay, we, we have to stay active in our faith. We have to find ways to continue growing and continue to stay connected. And as a body of believers, it's, it's one of our jobs to keep people accountable in that, keep people connected.
connected. And when we see people struggling or when we notice that people have become disconnected, we reach out to them. All right. So with that, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for Fridays. We thank you for your word, your encouragement, your Holy Spirit power. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit power would work in us this weekend and inspire us to reach out to someone who has has been disconnected or maybe someone who's fallen asleep in their faith and that you can use us to help wake them up and to help give them a, a reboot, a spiritual restart. Lord, just remind us as we go through the Christian life each and every day, as sometimes it can be a grind, help us to reflect on the, the amazing sacrifice of your son and how it transforms us. And let us never fall asleep to that or become dull to that, but let that inspire us each and every day to serve you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, hey, it was great to gather with you again. Have an awesome weekend. We will see you on Sunday, whether that's here in church in person or live online at 9 o'clock on Facebook or YouTube. We're looking forward to it. Have a blessed weekend, everyone. Be safe. We'll see you soon.